Okay, now, so in this part of our lesson, we're going to discuss trigonometric ratios in the unit circle. So, to begin with, we're going to start by defining what a unit circle is. Now, by definition, a unit circle is an oriented circle of radius 1. Radius 1 units. This is why it's called a unit circle. Uh, however, what is an oriented circle? Now, similarly to uh, number lines, number lines are in fact straight lines over which uh, you include a sense of orientation. So you'd have an origin and you'd have, for example, the positive sense to the right and the negative sense to the left. So number lines are in fact straight lines over which you include a sense of orientation. Similarly, an oriented circle is a circle over which you include a sense of orientation. By convention, the positive sense is counterclockwise it goes against the clock, so the positive sense is counterclockwise, while the negative sense is clockwise. So if you were to be looking at these two circles here at the bottom, now uh, these two angles have a measure of 60 degrees, but if this were to be in an oriented circle, we'd have to know if the angle is in fact opening from this side to that one and in that case it would be opening in the positive sense so the angle would have a measure of plus 60 degrees or it would be opening from this side to that side where in this case the angle would be opening in the negative sense and the angle would have a measure of negative 60 degrees. So this is what oriented angles are and uh, what a unit circle is. So a unit circle would in fact be an oriented circle where all angles and arcs are oriented but the radius of the unit circle is in fact one unit. Some books do actually call the unit circle a trigonometric circle so whenever you encounter a trigonometric circle in any reference. A trigonometric circle is in fact an oriented circle of radius 1, which is the unit circle. Now, we have so far uh, studied the trigonometric ratios in right triangles. We're going to extend that into studying trigonometric ratios in the unit circle. Now, over here, I have a unit circle over which I introduce an orthonormal system. An orthonormal system where over here the radius of the circle would actually be one unit of the orthonormal system. So if I were to have any point P on the circle, P of coordinates x, y. Now you know that this is x and this would in fact be y. So over here, this being y, the ordinate of point P, and this being a rectangle, then in fact this side of the right triangle here is in fact equals to y units. So this is x and this is y. So over here, if I were to look for sine of this angle theta, angle theta that is formed by the radius and segment OP. So sine of theta would in fact be opposite, that's y, over the hypotenuse. Now the hypotenuse is a radius of the unit circle, it's in fact 1. So y is equal to sine theta. So the ordinate or y coordinate of point P is in fact sine of the angle that it forms with the horizontal axis. And similarly, cosine theta would in fact be adjacent, which is x, over the hypotenuse, which is in fact one. So the coordinates of point P, <clears throat> having a point P on the circle that forms an angle theta with a horizontal axis, point P would in fact be the point of coordinates cosine theta and sine theta. So consequently, the orthonormal system that you have introduced on the unit circle would uh, in fact have cosine as 
the horizontal axis and sine for the vertical axis. So cosine and sine would in fact be represented by the x-axis and the y-axis respectively. Okay, so and of course tan theta would be y over x because of the definition of tan being sine over cosine. Now, however, if we were to still uh, be looking inside this right triangle, according to Pythagoras, we have x squared, plus, uh, sorry, plus y squared equals to the radius squared, which is the hypotenuse, which is 1. So cosine squared theta. So x being cosine, so that leads me to cosine squared theta plus sine squared theta equals to 1. Now, this is a very important identity to remember. Now, this is in fact called the Pythagorean identity. So the Pythagorean identity consists of having cosine squared theta plus sine squared theta equals to 1, and that is for all theta. Whatever the angle is, cosine squared plus sine squared of the same angle, their sum is always equals to 1. And that is a very important identity to remember. However, now if we were to discuss the axes corresponding to tan theta and cotan theta. Now, similarly to how we have located the axes of cosine and sine, we have already seen that the x-axis on the unit circle is in fact corresponding to the axis of cosine and the y-axis is corresponding to the axis of sine. Now, over here, if we were to consider these two tangents to the unit circle over here at these corresponding points, one at the point corresponding to an angle theta equals to zero, and the other one corresponding to an angle theta of 90 degrees or pi over two radians. Okay, so if we were to consider these two tangents, now these two tangents to the circle would in fact represent the axes of tan and cotan. For instance, if we were to look here at these two right triangles that we have here, we have here this first right triangle, where if I were to, for example, call this point Q here, if I were to look at the right triangle corresponding to, uh, in fact, the triangle OPQ. Now, over here, you'd notice that the other triangle that is formed by this tangent, which, uh, for example, if I were to call this point uh, A, and I were to call this point B. So if you look at the right triangle OAB, now OAB and OQP are in fact similar triangles, so their sides are proportionate. So over here, if we were to be looking at uh, AB over OA, so if we were to look at the ratio of these two sides of the bigger triangle, the two triangles being similar, then PQ over OQ is equals to that ratio. So AB over OA would be the same as or proportional to uh, QP over OQ. That's a Q. Okay, so over here, AB divided by OA. OA is the radius of the circle, which is 1. And QP, QP is, in fact, Y of point P, which is sine theta. And OQ is X of point P, which is cosine theta. And we know that sine theta over cosine theta is tan, so which leads me to AB being equals to tan theta. So this is why here AB is marked uh, to be tan of the angle theta. And similarly, if you were to extend 
line OP to intersect the axis of cotan, you notice that this distance here would actually be cotan uh, theta. Okay, so uh, similarly to how we proved that this uh, distance here is tan theta by considering this big right triangle here that is uh, proportional or similar to this smaller triangle here. So you could basically prove that over here, this side of this triangle is in fact cosine theta over sine theta, which is equals to cotan, cotan, which is one over tan theta. Okay, so this is the axis of tan, and this is the axis of cotan. So wherever P is on the circle, in order to determine its trigonometric ratios, basically all you have to do is just extend line OP to intersect the corresponding axes. So for example, if P was on this quadrant of, in this quadrant of the unit circle. Now over here, since this is the abscissa of P, now if I were to call, sorry, this angle, hey, that OP, if I were to call this angle alpha, so over here, the abscissa of uh, P would be cosine of alpha, and of course here, don't forget that on this part of the x-axis, they're negative, so cosine alpha here would have a negative value, and this distance here would in fact be sine alpha, which is a positive, it's on the positive part of the y-axis. However, in order to determine in order to determine tan of alpha and cotan of alpha, all you have to do is just extend line OP to intersect the axis of tan. So over here, this is tan alpha. And you notice that here, it's on the lower part of the axis of tan. So you can consider this to be the origin. Above the origin, tan is positive. Below the origin, tan is negative. So alpha here has a negative tan. And similarly, if I were to extend OP to intersect the axis of cotan, this would in fact be representing cotan alpha. And again, this is the point that represents the origin of the axis of cotan. So on this side, cotan alpha is negative. Now, we need to uh, just uh, go through a couple of more consequences of the trigonometric ratios of the unit circle that we still have not discussed yet. So you've known, uh, I think, uh, you, you already know that cosine and sine of any angle cannot have a value outside negative one and one. And this is why, however you move P on the circle, all around the circle, the abscissa and the ordinate of P always lie between negative 1 and 1, whether on the x-axis and on the y-axis. So this is why sine of the angle uh, forming uh, the angle between OP and the horizontal axis, sine and cosine of that angle can never exceed 1 or be smaller than negative 1 because point uh, P would at most have an abscissa or an ordinate equal to 1 and negative 1 as you vary it across the circle. So cosine and sine are always between negative 1 and 1. However, tan and cotan could be greater than 1, so this only applies for cosine and sine. Now, if we were to discuss just a little bit the sign of the trigonometric ratios uh, on the unit circle. So, having a unit circle and introducing an orthonormal system to that uh, unit circle, you'd notice that the circle is divided into four quadrants. A quadrant is a quarter of a circle. So, having four quadrants here. Now, over here, this is quadrant one. 2, so we move in that order. This is 1, 2, 3, and 4. Now, over here, regarding the size of the trigonometric ratios, now this is being the axis of cosine and this being the axis of sine, then in this first quadrant, x and y are positive. So over here, x is positive, and over here, y is 
positive. So for that reason, in quadrant one, cosine is positive and sine is positive, and tan and cotan being ratios of sine and cosine, then that would leave me with positive tan and cotan. If we move to quadrant two, in quadrant two, x is negative, while y is positive. So in quadrant two, cosine is negative and sine is positive. So cosine and sine having opposite signs in quadrant two, that would in fact lead us to negative tan and a negative cotan because tan and cotan are ratios of sine and cosine. Now if we move to quadrant three, in quadrant three x is negative and y is negative. So this is why cosine and sine are both negative in quadrant uh, three, so which leaves us with a positive tan and a positive cotan in quadrant three, tan and cotan being the uh, ratios of cosine and sine. And uh, finally, in quadrant four, cosine is positive since x is positive and sine is negative since y is negative and cosine and sine having opposite signs their ratios tan and cotan would actually be negative and it would in fact make sense so for example if we were to consider the axis of tan and the axis of cotan even though you don't have to really draw these uh, axes in order to determine the sine and cosine, you could just determine it by taking the ratios of x and y. But however, you'd notice that quadrant 1, any angle in quadrant 1 and any angle in quadrant 3 would intersect the axis of, co of tan and the axis of cotan on their positive part. While any angle in quadrant 4 or in quadrant 2 would actually intersect the axis of tan and cotan on their negative parts, which in fact makes sense with the ratios of, with the sign of the ratios of x and y in these corresponding quadrants. So if we were to move to the following example, it says that given that sine theta is 3 over 5 and theta is between 0 and pi over 2. Now remember, pi uh, corresponds to 180 degrees, so that's 90 degrees. Pi over 2 is 90 degrees. So if I were to just catch a small unit circle with the orthonormal system, 0, 90 or 0 pi over 2 <coughs> falls in fact in quadrant 1. So. I need to determine cosine. I'm given sine and I need to determine cosine. So of course here we're looking for exact values. So you would not find theta and then plug it in cosine. Okay, we're aiming to look for exact values here. So we'd refer to the Pythagorean identity that states that cosine squared plus sine squared is one. I have sine, so I can find cosine squared, and from cosine squared, I can determine cosine. So cosine squared theta is 1 minus sine squared theta, which is in fact 1 minus 9 over 25. Reducing to the same denominator and subtracting, that would leave you with 16 over 25. So cosine theta would actually be 4 over 5, or negative 4 over 5. Please do not assume that cosine is positive because on the unit circle it really depends in which quadrant it falls. But however, uh, the angle theta is in quadrant 1, consequently cosine is positive in quadrant 1 because x is positive. So this is in fact rejected. So it really depends on where theta is. Sometimes you could be rejecting the positive value. So this is why never forget the plus or minus when you go back from the square. So cosine theta is 4 over 5. So which leaves me to finding tan as sine theta over cosine theta. Since I have sine, I have cosine. I can in fact find tan. So tan theta would actually be 3 over 5 divided by over 5, uh, 4 over 5. So tan theta would actually be 3 over 5.